It's the ABCs of IBC. So it's the one, two, three of the infinite banking concept. Here at the Cash Compound, we're breaking down in a couple of videos here. We hope that you like, subscribe, share, and click the bell. School is in session around the simplicity of understanding what we call the save and spend system. I'm Jay Du, one of the banking bros here at the Cash Compound. I'm gonna run through the pros and the cons to infinite banking. Perhaps you've heard of this idea, but you don't really know where to start, what's going on. You're hearing conflicting messages. I'm just going to break it down for you in what I think are some of the easiest ways to understand the pros and the cons. So let's go to the screen here, ladies and gents. We're going to break down the pros and the cons and just list them out. Now, when we go through the pros here in just one second, I want to recognize that we're already going to assume we're going to use the proper tool for the infinite banking concept. Infinite banking concept is a thing as coined and codified in Becoming Your Own Banker, the fifth edition, by R. Nelson Nash. So that tool we're going to use to solve the problem of interest and the banking, commercial banking system taking over the power of your personal banking uh, abilities, that's going to be a whole life insurance policy. We're going to use one from a mutual company so we can participate in the dividends, and we're going to properly structure it overfund it, utilize PUA from the jump, from the get-go, and maybe all of that is confusing for you. No problem. We're going to list out the pros rather quickly, and then I'm going to get to the cons. Stay tuned for that, and the cons will address the simplicity of understanding this piece by piece. We're here in this series to answer your questions about what's going on. If you know what's going on, you'll know what to do. So here we go. Let's get into it. The pros. We've got the pros, and we're going to list out the eight ideals in this asset, okay? Number one, we've got guarantees. Remember that when we're utilizing an infinite banking policy, whole life insurance is a guaranteed product. A guaranteed product means that we are going to give them money, and they're going to provide us with a contract. There are certain obligations the insurance company has because now that we've given them money, they've got to give us the assurance by the insurance that they will pay. They will preserve capital because it'll be there tomorrow in two, five, tenfold when we die. Okay? Number two, one of my favorites around here, we have got constant compounding. Remember that once we give our money, premium to the insurance company. It is guaranteed to grow for the rest of our whole life. So our dollars must return to our family, friends, church, and charity, a death benefit, of course. It's going to return to them, and there's going to be ever-increasing liquidity from that. Many people don't understand that from the jump, but we'll get into that with more information on this video and the cons. Number three, we do have liquidity. There are other products out there you probably in your mind are comparing it to at this point, but not all of them have liquidity. Throughout the life of ours and the insurance contract, we are going to have money to use. So even though we've given our dollars to the insurance company, we have money that we're going to be utilizing through this process. Banking will not happen unless there's liquid money for transactions. We've got to turn our money into product and services rather quickly, so there needs to be liquidity. Number four, we've got privacy. This contract is going to be privately owned by the owner, the person, the insured person perhaps, if it's on yourself, the trust that you completely control because you're a trustee. So this is a private thing. This is not something that a third party owns or even can look at. It's a private contract between you and the insurance company. Those of us who are in business, those of us who have tax liabilities and obligations understand how important privacy can be for you to conduct your own business or your own transactions without third parties interference. Number five, we have got a feature here. In the privacy world, it is unregulated. We are not working from or thinking about qualified plans, for instance. Many times we get into a comparison game. We'll talk about that in just a second. 
This is a non-qualified asset. That is private. That means is it is unregulated. You can utilize it. Use it, lose it, abuse it however you want. You can put in unlimited contributions into banking systems or whole life insurance policies. There's a lot of things that you are flexible uh, able to be flexible about because it is unregulated or flexible. Okay, number six, another pro is the passive income aspect. Who doesn't want passive income? P passive residual income, it just keeps coming. You don't have to check on it. You can check into it every once in a while by logging in or taking a look, and there's always more money there. Passive income, you don't have to work harder for it. You don't have to be smart. Could have been set up for you when you were a baby, so you could have been completely illiterate and broke when you got one. There will be an increasing pool of liquid passive income privately and constantly compounding coming towards you. Think about these as pros in this ideal asset. Number seven of eight, a high savings rate. Now, I know several of you out there who might be listening to this, maybe in your mind right now, you are thinking about, wow, I've heard differently from whole life insurance. And that's because you're probably comparing it to something crazy. Okay? We are at a high savings rate. Remember, these dollars are safe and secure. There are guarantees here, and there is going to be a savings rate that's high, probably in the 3-plus percent range, depending on where you've got it. But it's guaranteed to be there. That is way different than your savings account currently. I know some of you are still thinking, maybe in your mind right now, wait a minute. I can get more return. Oh, we'll get to that in the cons area. But remember, this is a savings environment, a savings account. Okay? And number eight are tax considerations. Tax favorableness. All right? It's got the ness in there. Your tax favorableness inside your liquid, guaranteed, constant compounding, private, unregulated, passive income environment. You've got tax favorableness, favorableness, okay? So what we mean by that is we have got dollars going in today that are going to grow and not be subject to taxes in the future. Remember, we are not inside an environment where income is going to be realized ever when structuring a policy correctly and utilizing it for its cash value. We are taking loans against insurance, and both of those two things are not taxable. There is no income when we're taking loans from insurance. Insurance places uh, replaces a loss, right? Okay, let's section this off for a second, and now let's go to the longer section where we can talk about the things that you've heard out there in the world, and we're going to walk and talk through them on this video the cons, okay? I've got eight cons. I had to match it up over here, and all of my cons start with C, okay? If you've been around here long enough to know at the Cash Compound, we're cracking the code to cash flow, and I am one of the two banking bros. Lots of alliteration out there, lots of words that rhyme so we can break it down for you and me. So everything is going to have a C involved with it here on the con side so we can walk and talk through many things that you might be thinking or that you've read or heard so we can help you understand better how infinite banking is going to work, how it doesn't work, what is it you're comparing it to, and all those things. The first thing, actually, that is a con for many people. We're going to give you guys the benefit of the doubt. And it's going to be the complexity of it. The complexity. So depending on where you're starting from and your mental space here, uh, you might have real trouble understanding what we're even talking about. I know that I did. If I can relate to you for one second, when I first heard about the infinite banking concept, I knew nothing about finance and I knew nothing about banks. So I was starting from a deficit because it seemed complex. I don't know what banking is. I put my money inside my checking account, direct deposit, and I get a debit card. I swipe against that money and it goes down. That's all I knew. I did not know what banking really was. And one of the reasons for that is because I was listening to Dave Ramsey 
up until that point in my life. When you start listening to Dave Ramsey at 21, 22 years old, and you never had a credit card, you're not going to really understand banking or finance because you finance everything with cash. That was me, so it was kind of complex. I did not understand what banking was all about. Many of you are probably having that same problem. And so when I'm talking to you, right here, you, you might also be missing out on what banking is because you're immediately thinking investing. If you think investing, you're going to miss out on the word banking completely. It's not the infinite investing concept. It's the infinite banking concept. Okay, here we go. The next one is going to be what I have called cloudiness. Let me explain. Cloudiness here. Okay, lies and untruths about what tool we're going to use. Most of the infinite banking concept should be wound up and wound around using whole life insurance. And if you don't understand that and you have some cloudiness around whole life insurance or insurance, you might be uh, thrown off. How about this one? Have you ever heard that it's super high priced? It's super high priced. You can buy insurance for cheaper money. I agree. There's a complete difference between Fords and Ferraris. Both are cars. If you just use the word car and you're trying to get from point A to point B, I might also suggest that you buy the cheapest one. But if you want to ride in style, if you want to go fast, if you want to impress the ladies, whatever it is, Ferrari does the job differently. So when you use a generic term like insurance and focus on the properties of insurance, specifically maybe for a protection, you're going to be clouded because whole life insurance, wow, it costs more. You know what also costs more than renting? Buying a house. It costs more. Over the course of a rental for a year or two years or five, you're going to pay less money than if you buy and you have to pay that mortgage for 15 or 30 years. But they do different things. So we are going to focus on what we're trying to accomplish and how we're trying to get there. What we're trying to accomplish is probably ownership and equity. That's in the real estate world, renting and buying. We're trying to get there in style. That's in the car world, Ford versus Ferrari. So if you've just heard high priced, you probably are comparing things that are not going to give us our ultimate goal or flexibility and liquidity on the way through. Another one might be commissions, cloudiness on commissions. The only reason that someone is trying to sell you on this tool or on this product is because they earn high commissions. Well, here's the question. As compared to what? High commissions as compared to what? Remember, most of us out there in the traditional American financial model are actually investing into our 401ks, Roth IRAs, 403bs, or other retirement vehicles. We're investing dollars in there, and someone is getting paid potentially 1% or so every single time. And they're getting paid on the total amount even if that total amount goes down. How many of you have seen and you're nervous to look at that quarterly statement for your 401k because it goes down sometimes? You also realize now, because we're talking about it, that someone's getting paid off the entire pool, not on your contribution, and it goes down. They still get paid. Does that make sense to you? When we're talking about commissions in life insurance, there's always a commission on an insurance product. They're not getting paid off of the total off the death benefit, off the spoils. That's not what they're getting paid off of. They're getting paid off one installment in the beginning. If I am a life insurance agent or broker and I could choose between how I wanted to get paid, get paid commission on the front end off of a piece of what gets the whole thing started or get 1% or so off everything that is going to happen for the rest of that person's life, and it's off of not the installment, but off the entirety. In this case, in life insurance, it'd be the death benefit. I'd choose the way your 401k or brokerage account works. I'd choose a different way to get paid. I would get more money getting paid off the things that you already do. The commission is actually lower if you compare it to things that most people understand and already do. You got it? So 
Yes. Commission is a part of a life insurance uh, contract for sure. Someone needs to get paid. You, someone got paid off your car insurance, your phone insurance, and your fire insurance as well. And I don't think most people really care that someone got paid off that. Okay, here we go. Composure is number three. The reason I put composure in the game here is because uh, building a business takes time. I know when I say banking to many folks that I coach on the phone, they don't realize that it's a business. I think everyone should be in two businesses, the business in which they make income and the banking business. You already are a participant in the banking business right now, but it's Wells Fargo and Bank of America that actually own and control the banking function in your life. You can own and control it, and I think you should, but that is a business. So we need some composure in realizing that building businesses take time. Also, there's more and more profitability if you build a good business over time. Michael Jordan makes a lot more money off Nikes today than he did off the first contract. The first contract paid him a couple million dollars over some time. We remember the movie, right? But now he gets paid way more than that. He gets paid so much more money by Nike specifically. Forget the Hanes, the Ballpark Franks, and the Gatorades. He gets more money off of Nike than he did in his entire NBA career from Jerry Krause. When he played for the Bulls, he made so much less money than he makes now. We need to have composure. We're building a business. For the first several thousand shots Michael Jordan took on the basketball court, in his backyard, he didn't get paid at all. We need some composure. He did it for the love of the game and knew what it could bring him in the long run. He just loved to participate. If you have composure in building a banking system, you win every time. So let's make sure that we understand that a bank is a business. Next one here. The comparison game may get you. The comparison game. We're going to go back to the cloudiness that I had in point number two, the comparison game. As compared to what? Many people say, uh, you know, um, man, this is a rate of return that I just could do better with elsewhere. Well, I agree, but a rate of return game that you're going to play elsewhere in an investment should be higher than the bank. See, the bank could go make a whole lot more money if the bank got into investments. But RBC, TD, Citibank, Chase, Truist, they're not in the investment game when they're just the banker. The banking system is completely different. So we've got to be careful when we decide to compare investments to our banking system. If we have a banking system, we're going to have more cash. What is the result of having a bank? It's having more liquid cash and profits. And if you have more liquid cash and profits all the time, can't you go get into any investments that you like? Be careful what you're comparing it to. This is a bank, not an investment tool. This is a savings environment where we're going to put our dollars and guarantee them to grow and have more cash flow for us all the time. You can get into investments after that. The next comparison that a lot of folks get into is the comparison with different products. We are talking about utilizing the mainstream flagship product for infinite banking concept, but that has really been, really been bastardized by a lot of people on the internet. And a lot of people are comparing it to the returns or the upside potential you might get in specifically designed or certain types of universal life insurance contracts, index universal life insurance specifically. There's lots of people pushing it, talking about it. Very few of them understand it well. And if we're going to compare the projections of potential market returns and participation in our IUL to the guaranteed growth and equity in whole life insurance, you might get thrown off. That comparison is going to kill you because the comparison also does not mention the other factors inside universal life insurance contracts. If you have a universal life insurance contract, you need to understand what that is and what it isn't. The guarantees are completely different, even though they're both coming from life insurance companies, maybe even the same companies. If you don't understand that or it hasn't been explained to you, you may not want to take the risks associated with mixing your insurance with investment products or investment grade products. A lot of people say, hey, I think it's really stupid 
And Dave Ramsey told me, don't mix my investments with my insurance. And generally speaking, I agree. That's why I'm not going to use IUL. But if you don't know what they are and the features inside of these products, you're going to get messed up on your comparison. Okay, another one is going to be now the construction. The construction of the policy may get you. Because we are talking often about properly designed custom whole life or um, custom specially designed, whatever those terms might be. So how does it get set up? First off, I would encourage you to work with a professional who knows what they're doing, who's talking about this from the get-go. That's what we do here at the Cash Compound. So we're going to set up policies the way we're talking about. It's not something that we can do. It's what we focus on. So the construction of the policy is important, and this is what I always say. We are going to utilize a properly structured whole life insurance policy, whole life, guaranteed to grow in cash flow, from a mutual insurance company that pays dividends, high Comdex score, super old, paid the dividends and had profits each year and every year for over 100 consecutive, that's a big deal, and then we're going to set it up for you on purpose so we can utilize it for cash, for financing, or banking from the jump. So the construction of the policy is important. If you've been trying to see if your policy that you own now fits into this model, we're already starting from a rocky place. If it did, you might already know because you set it up that way on purpose or you had a broker do it. So if you don't know, you should ask. And if you're utilizing something outside of whole life insurance, you should already know from what I've said that we're already probably not in the right place. The construction of the policy is important. So you're going to have a con there if you don't have a policy set up right, set up from the right company or something like that. Also, let's get down to it, ladies and gentlemen. The cost can be a con for people. Because if you want to start a bank, if you want to start a banking system, you need to put some money in it. It's going to require some money. When you opened up your first bank account when you were 12 or 16 years old, and mom took you down there, sat you down, you filled out the paperwork, they asked you what you wanted to start with. And either you had lawn mowing money, or you looked at mom like probably I did, and you said, uh, I don't have any money. And mom had to transfer some from her checking or savings account into yours. You remember that? It costs dollars to start it. So if you don't have any dollars, how are you going to start a business or a banking system? You need to put dollars in. That's called premium in insurance. We're going to put some premium in. And if we're going to have a banking system, wouldn't we like a lot of money in our bank account? When you look at your bank account, do you feel better when there's more money in than you're expecting? When you find money in the dryer in your pocket, do you, do you like that? It's gonna co That's cost. We need to put some dollars in the game. The more money I have in my checking account, the better my wife feels, that's for sure. So we're going to put some money in the game, okay? So the cost may deter some people, of course, because they're broke. And they say, I want to have these guarantees, the growth, the liquidity, the privacy, but I don't have any money. And I'm going, well, you're going to need to start with some money if you want to start a business. Most businesses don't think they're going to make money or be profitable early on. So we're going to have to put some money in this game to start our own business. And if that is a negative thing for you, then maybe this isn't for you at all. The seventh one that we've got here, the seventh one is the cash crunch. We're going to put some dollars in in premium, but in the first several years, we're going to have a liquidity crunch. The cash crunch is in the first couple of years. Now, there's a lot of people out there who are going to talk about how much cash you can get to immediately. That is important, but it's not how much cash that's the most important. It's that you can get to cash and continue to finance things. But when you put in a dollar, there is a cost of the insurance. You did buy something. You bought death benefit. It costs some money, and cash value liquidity is not going to be one for one day one. If something is guaranteed to grow in cash flow for you, that means it's always going to get better. Day one of utilizing an infinite banking structure is going to be the least amount of liquidity. There's going to be a cash crunch. This throws people off, and it's a con for some people. Why? For two reasons. Number one, they don't understand we're building a banking system. And number two, some people think they need to break even. I hear that all the time prior to using the banking system. That is a fallacy. That is false. 
when we have cash value, we can immediately become a bank because we can leverage by borrowing it, having cash in hand, and we can utilize it just like Wells Fargo does. If your money is in USAA or Navy Federal, they're going to lend out that money even if they are not profitable yet, they're going to lend out your money, OPM, and get it on a credit card to someone immediately. So the cash crunch is a factor, 100%, but we're going to immediately start banking with it. And the idea of a bank is not to break even. The idea of a bank is to make money by using the money and keeping it flowing. Some people are going to get that. Some people consider it a con because they don't understand or they don't use their banking system and they just have a policy and a product. They don't have a banking system at all because they don't keep the money flowing. Okay, and number eight. This one might be tough for a lot of beginners out there. And if you're a beginner trying to figure this out, you may consider the cold shoulder from your family and friends a big con. Because all truth passes through three stages. According to Schopenhauer here, first, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. First, it's ridiculed. That may be some of the cons that I've addressed over here in the second half of this video. And for you, it may be violently opposed by the people that you know. See, if you want to level up and you have a new level, there's always a new devil, right? So if you are worried about what other people think because they are potentially getting great returns on investments and you are trying to start a banking system, you might be ridiculed or opposed. You may be dealing with folks who love cash so much, they said, why would I ever borrow my own money? And they don't realize that they're borrowing against other person's money, the insurance company. They're borrowing and leveraging that when they are utilizing an infinite banking structure. But if they're against that idea, don't understand it, you may just get the cold shoulder and feel really bad. If you can't get over that, I don't think being in business and building a bank is really for you, or you need to be real quiet about it for several years. And I know there's people out there like that as well. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching time. What I've done here is listed the pros and cons of an infinite banking structure and helping people understand their FAQs. It's the ABCs of IBC. If you need a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we'd love to chat with you about your specific situation. It's always customizable here, and it's always complimentary to get on a coaching call for a cash conversation. That's what we do. So give us a click, a like, a subscribe, share this information with somebody who you're having a conversation with right now so you guys can get started together in the idea of cracking the code to cash flow.